Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. I'm certainly glad that uh, you're listening to us. We have a new voice this morning, a new face. You can't see him unless you're on Facebook, but we have a new voice, and uh, it, he is very, very wonderful in many ways. Not only is he very attractive, but he's very smart. His name is Dr. Jason Alvian, and he is a chiropractor with Totality Chiropractic over there in Boca Raton. I'm right, in Boca Raton. That's correct. Yeah, yes. you know, I, I, you over know, here. I, that's right, because... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes, you know, there's such a cross between Delray, Boca Raton, and I'm, sometimes I'm a little confused, but you are in Boca and I was at your office. But let me just tell you a little bit about Jason, or you know what? I'm going to ask him about himself. So welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you. So what do you, what is your mission in life? I always like to get someone started because you're a doctor, you're a chiropractor, you've been doing it for 11 years. What is your mission, Jason? Oh, it's it's changed over the years, but as of right now, my mission is contribute. I just want to be able to see everybody and everyone out there be able to work together, be able to help each other, and give them something that, that you have to offer to just make somebody else's life better. It's, and when you were a little kid, did you did you decide you were going to be president of the United States or you are going to be a fireman? What did you want to be? I think the first thing I wanted to be was I wanted to work special effects in movies. <laughs> well, here you are. <laughs> and, and that that didn't happen. But it's right. but I remember that vividly when I was young. I wanted to do special effects. And there was a, a movie, uh, I think it was a horror movie called uh, FX. It was sci-fi horror. I... And I, that's what kind of got me into it. It was just neat to see that, that type of... Uh, work done to be able to make somebody look a different way or act a different way based on these effects that were out there. Now you do this in a medical way. I'm glad you brought that up because chiropractors are interesting people. They have special ways to make people feel good. It's not, I mean, there are physicians and that's not their training. The training, and why don't you tell us what a training of a chiropractor actually is? Well, we uh, have to do our undergrad work like anybody else, the basic sciences, just as if you were going through to be a dentist or a doctor in uh, medical, uh, just the basic sciences. Once you get through that and transition to chiropractic school, it really starts to change at that point. So you see the basic sciences where you learn the anatomy, the physiology and everything else, but it's the look at the body and how you treat it that's different from the medical community. Um, not that we don't work in conjunction with it. We just look at it differently from we don't want to be too invasive uh, when you don't have to be. And so I will tell you a story that years ago, I mean, this must have been maybe 50 years ago, 60. It's a long time ago that my mother suffered from lumbago. I never oh. hear that word anymore. OK, <laughs> lumbago. <No. laughs> and she just suffered. And then she remarried. And the man she remarried always went to a chiropractor. He actually had a furniture store, and he lifted a lot of things. He went to a chiropractor. So he said, Dottie, you have to go. He used to call her Poopsie. <laughs> this is a long time <laughs> I had to tell you this. He said, he said, I'm taking the chiropractor. And let me tell you, they put her on some sort of a rack and stretched her. Do you know she never suffered again? Oh, that's, a, that's what it's that's about. That's the story of a yeah. chiropractor in my mind. Yes, yes. What uh, did he do? So from what it sounded like when you said put her on this uh, this table, it was most like the IT table, which is an intersegmental traction. What it is, you lay on the table and you have this roller that goes up on the spine and it hits each individual vertebra of the spine and gets it more mobile and starts to help move it back into place before the adjustment. And so that's really... Uh, the kinds of things that you have and that you work with as a chiropractor. Yes. So in our in our office, uh, as far as chiropractic goes, we don't just do adjusting. We have a bunch of different avenues that we can work down uh, with different types of therapies from ultrasound to uh, laser decompression for the discs. We have a new technique that's been out for a few years, but it's called shockwave. And it's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing technique. I use it a lot on uh, actually runners and cyclists when they start to have plantar fasciitis. It's a great technique to be able to 
break up any of the adhesions that happen in the leg and get them back to running or cycling quicker. Is it, it a machine or just yeah, your hands? No, it's a, it's a machine. And it's, uh, if you've ever had a TENS unit, one of those yes. muscle stimulation, yes. it's kind of a mixture between that and a percussive massage all at the same time. So it just helps cause the muscle to relax at the same time, break up anything that's stuck together and it just gets things moving really good. Shockwave. And yeah. So it's not, it's not, um, hands on chiropractic, but it's another but avenue that we use. You have to be there to make sure it's done properly. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the interesting that thing that you told me, actually, Dr. J, Jason Alvins, I'm, I'm going to sp- sp- spell your last name, A-L-V-I-E-N-E, Alvian. Um, Jason told me that he started out as a massage therapist. Yes. And I usually have a massage once a month. I usually used to have them every two weeks, but <clears throat> it's what keeps me in my act, act of life. I never have back problems. I never have any problems. So people come to you. They can go have a massage. They can see you. And then you have other things that you do, too. And we've talked a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. But just like the shockwave is interesting. But yeah, I want to make sure that people understand that probably a lot of guests have other parts of their life. You know, they they have their profession. They have their marriage or their, you know, whatever they else they have. But you have something that I really was very impressed with. You're in the process of writing a book, and a lot of people are in the process of writing a book. It's what your book's about. And you told me that the name of your book, your upcoming book, was called Discover Your Pull, P-U-L-L. I almost fell down and said, what is pull? <laughs> I know what pull is, pull the wagon. So tell us why you named your and what your upcoming book's about. Because it's who you are, isn't it? This is- yeah, it's, it's it really is who I am, and it comes down to... Um... You can go all the way back to massage therapy and, and my stepping processes through the health field and everything comes down to communication. So within the body, the nervous system communicates with the brain and the body, the body and the brain, and you've got these signals that go back and forth. And during chiropractic, what we do is we make sure that those connections through the spinal column are corrective at saying what they need to back and forth from the brain to the body. However, I do notice it's what are you saying to yourself that's also sending those signals out to the body. So the pull, what it comes down to is everybody has a pull towards a certain type of personality or a pull towards a certain type of reaction. So the title Discover Your Pull is most of us are unconsciously making decisions every day that are the same over and over and over again, even if it's a different type of day. It just, we make the same decisions. So when you discover your pull, when you decide to really pay attention to what's going on with you and what's going on internally, you can actually focus on, okay, I tend to be drawn towards this. Why is that the case? And when you realize why that's the case, you might actually be able to make a different choice or a better choice. So when I said before, I want to be able to contribute to society, this contribution that I'm bringing out isn't just about me. It's about something that I believe everybody in the world can use, because when you make a better choice, we're going to have a better society altogether. Yes, that's really true. And I was thinking, though, the first thing as you were speaking was about stress, and we talked about that. Mm -hmm. So it's what you're, as you said, pull towards something. So if you're in a stressful situation, some people can deal with it in one way and another person deals with it differently, right? Yes. And that's where the stress factor comes in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's um, when we look at uh, when we make a decision, uh, people say, oh, I make rational decisions. There really isn't that much of a true statement in a rational decision. So we actually don't make rational decisions on a regular basis. We make decisions based on the emotional mood that we're in at the time. Really? Yeah. So, for example, it can be a happy mood. If you've all had a day where we were just in such an elated mood and we were so happy and we made a decision to go out and make a purchase or did something with friends or did uh, anything. Like you're here on the radio show. This was your decision to make. and, And you had a good time. And then the next day you were in a bad mood for whatever reason. And you think about the day before and you say, oh, I can't believe I said that or I can't believe I did that. Even if it was a good day, 
you still look at it from a different perspective because now your mood is different. So all our decisions that we make are tied to the emotion that we're currently in. That's a very interesting thing. I don't think that I do that. I don't think I go back to the other day and complain if it was good. <laughs> That's was good. good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that I do that. That's a. It, I always call that a neg- negative factor. I don't. I, I don't have a lot of negativity in my life. I mean, everyone has some, but I try to stay away from people who are negative because it does pull you into their yes into their space. We do share energies from each other. That's for sure. You tend to start acting or being like the people that you're around. Um, and I brought up a, a good scenario there. Usually when somebody's happy and they're making decisions, they like the decisions they're making, but we've all been in a bad mood or we've all been angry and we've all said something at a time that made sense. And then when we weren't angry, we start kicking ourselves saying, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, I know I have. <laughs> yeah, well, well, of course, but if you, if you're an honest person and you do things with a good feeling, it, you just have to go with it. You know, it's oh, yeah. if there's no meanness in it, then that's the way it is. So when patients come in to you, and I'll say Dr. Alvian so that I make people understand your name, uh, they probably, uh, maybe some of them have fallen and they are really hurt. But aren't there people who come in who are complaining about back problems and all, and it's that the stress has just gotten them, that they, they're in a space that's not, very helpful and you have to talk to, i can see your personality mm-hmm. you help talk them out of it and you help and probably that's where this whole book has come from you know that part of it is those you said the brain and what are you thinking and that's affecting their their body isn't it oh yeah see with, with uh with practicing chiropractic because our way of treatment we're using our hands we have to see you multiple times. It's not like we can you can take our hands home with you, use it for a couple of weeks and come back and see how you're doing. So we have conversations sometimes on, on quite a few times a week with the same patient. And you have to work on their thought process because, yes, we can get that spine back into a better position, get that nervous system functioning better. But if the mind's still telling them bad things, it's not going to be as successful. So we do have to have that conversation and make sure they, they're confident that they're going down the right path to feeling better and being more functional. As a massage therapist, you had a lot of practice because I know oh, we yeah. did a lot of talking. We do oh, a lot of talking. Yes. <laughs> I, so that was one of the, the big things I did when I went into the massage room is I let the client lead the conversation. If the client was quiet, I was quiet. If the client wanted to talk, I would engage with what they were saying and allow them to keep speaking because the time was about them. Sometimes people just wanted to talk. Some people, times people wanted to be quiet. But I, I realized that whether I was doing massage, whether I'm practicing chiropractic, it all comes down to we're having a conversation and that communication is the most important aspect of it. I want people to know if you would like to make an appointment, uh, you can go on the web to totalitychiropractic.com. Should we also give them a phone number to to call? Sure. What would you like them to call? It's a 561 uh-huh. 826 okay. 3808. Okay, we'll do that again. 561 826 3808 and just ask for Dr. Alvien, that's A L V I E N E and that's Totality Chiropractic. And what actually is your address in Boca Raton? Uh 1449 Yamato Road. Easy and that's sweet. Sweet too. Okay. Okay. So we want to make sure that people know who you are, and we're gonna. And Dr. Alvian will be on every week uh, for a while now, which is great. So if you have any questions or you want to know anything, of course you can contact us at our office, or you can call him and talk to him. So let's get uh, let's get back to your book. You've never written a book, and you said right? Oh, well, you have. Uh oh. I wrote one, and okay, it was so. it was it was uh, I say a selfish book, and it actually turns out to be something that's useful. So when I uh, decided finally that I was going to sit down and put myself together to get this book written, um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to write about yet, but I knew I knew that I wanted to be able to write a book. So the first one I wrote was really a 33-page manual on 
how to write a book. I remember <laughs> you told me that. And I went through the process of self-publishing so I could make sure I went through all the steps and got it published because I wasn't looking to market it or anything like that. It was just I wanted to know what I needed to do for myself to be able to go from the sitting down process to the writing process, the editing process, the publishing process, and then the getting it out there. You have such a scientific mind. <laughs> that that tends to uh, that tends to happen when you go through all these basic sciences and everything like that. But I know that if I don't have a plan and I don't have a structure, even if the structure wavers as you go through, because we know life happens, I it gives me that that mindset to be able to. It's really there. important because, I mean, I was so different from my husband. He always made a plan because he wrote quite a few books. <laughs> and he had these yellow stickies up there, and every chapter was on yellow stickies. I have yellow stickies. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, yeah, but the, that's, that's called a scientist, someone who's very organized and has it all figured out. Okay, so now you wrote that book, and now you know a lot of things that people need to have. By the way, if people want your book, how to write a book. Is it available? Yeah, it's on Amazon. <laughs> Aha! So that's a good thing. And it's uh, only, you said, it's 33 pages? Yeah, it's like 33 pages, 32, 33. Does I think it cost you, a lot of money? No, I think it's, uh, $10? it's like $10. And then I guess the people that have the Kindle dis, uh, subscription can get it oh for free. Oh, my goodness. So, so I just put good. it on there just to, to do it. So now you feel confident about writing your book. Yes, yes. So... So the uh, the whole thing is interesting because it's called Discovering Your Pull. And uh, um, before we get into that, you like to specialize with people who have sports injuries. You told me that. Yeah, so I uh, personally like doing triathlons. So uh, I belong to the Boca Raton triathletes there in the area here, obviously, because of the town. And um, I've been a, a little away from it for a while. I've been focusing more on the running. Um my uh, wife wants to do a half marathon coming up in January, so we've been focusing on that together. But uh, I've done um, two uh, Ironman events. Those are really long. I don't know if I'm going to do another one, but I know a lot of people around here that do them, and I know the toll it takes on the body to train for that. That's right. It's the swimming. It's the running. It's the bicycling. Really, oh, yeah. it is Ironman. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the uh, the long events. They have shorter ones that, but the long ones. Yeah, it's well. You're in very good shape, so you you must exercise a lot, and you probably watch what you eat. And and as a chiropractor, that's part of what I think you probably help have to help your patients with. If you see someone who comes in as overweight or obese, I mean, you've got to be able to say something to them. Yeah, and again, it's one of the things. Do they want to change? So we bring it up in uh, in the questionnaires. And uh, we do talk about it on the initial visit. Uh, we try to focus on what their problem is that they're there for so we can help them along those lines and get them through that so we can then make a healthier lifestyle. But some patients, it's, they don't want to change that lifestyle, and I have to accept that. I see. But I tell you what pains me is when I see someone who's very overweight and they're limping and they're moving along mm -hmm. and I... I feel so badly for them, but you as a physician, when they come in, you have the right to say certain things, but I think what you just said is very true. They probably don't care enough, and but they see the condition they're in. I mean, how do they put those two things together? Well, I think a, a part of it would be uh, working on, again, that mindset. So this is where that comes into it. It's like, why are they making those choices? What is it about them that's making the choices to not want to exercise or some people exercise too much or want to eat healthy or not want to eat healthy. Where is these choices coming from and what mindset did the person get into to lead them there? So then you really, do you have any courses in psychology? Sounds like you must have. Oh, we took plenty of them, yeah. but it's, uh, I, I do a lot of reading outside of, uh, mm -hmm. outside of this just to, for me to better understand what's going on. So, just to tell everybody again, let's just do this. A phone number if you want to talk with Dr. Alvian or go to his chiropractic, Totality Chiropractic. It's 561-826-3808. 826-3808. And remember, this is Pencil Talk Radio. You're supposed to have your pencil right there. <laughs> and you're supposed to write down everything. 
uh, their website. You can see that as totalitychiropractic.com. And I like the name totality. It means because they have a lot of physicians. They have a, they have a DO. Mm -hmm. They have a massage therapist. They have the chiropractors. And so it's a total effort, really, to get you in shape and feel good, right? Yeah, we also um, we also have a doctor of physical therapy there, too. So this way we have oh, a, a whole gamut of everything can be worked on and everybody can focus on what their specialty is. So let's just say that someone has had hip or knee replacement. You're saying that you then, they could come to Totality Chiropractic and have their physical therapy mm -hmm. done there. Yes, Mm -hmm. But with the oversight also, you know, now you have your massage therapist right on the, you know, right there. Mm -hmm. And then you have, of course, chiropractic and then you have a DO. So that's really important. And I know you're expanding your, everything's going to be much uh, larger. Yeah. yeah, we're in the, the that process right now. We should be moving on to the, uh, the new space that was just built out in about a week and a half. And then the space that we're currently in is going to be redone. And hopefully by January, February, they'll be tied together and the office will be almost double the size of what we were working in. Amazing. Well, I can see why, because <clears throat> a lot of times people just go to a chiropractor or they just go to their doctor or they go to or a massage therapist. Right. Mm -hmm. So you combined it all. Very smart. That's why the totality chiropractic makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's get, get the total wealth right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's get into your book a little bit more now, because it seems like this is really who you are. So discovering your pull. Uh, and, and you're so organized, so you probably have it by chapters. Of course. <laughs> I wrote an outline first. You <laughs> no, have to. No, of course you did. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> and so when someone finishes reading your book, what do you want them to accomplish? I want them to be able to have a better conversation with themselves. Or when their thoughts do take them down the wrong way, they can just pay attention to them and they don't always have to react to them. Ah, yes, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's really the, you know, there's a saying about before you do anything, just take a deep breath and mm -hmm. think about it, right? Most people don't do that. Yeah, and it's not just it's, uh, you're allowed to think, but you don't always have to react to those right. thoughts. It's, all of us have been in bed at night and trying to fall asleep and we're trying to, plan for the next day in bed the next day is going to come regardless why plan it then if you really need to get up and write it down <laughs> that's, that's that's who you are um, i usually use a meditation tape to go to sleep oh wow okay i've been doing that a long time and it, it and i i really want to meditate but i go to sleep the minute it starts <laughs> well then it works <laughs> it does it does really work yeah it's it's um it's true we're all under a lot of stress and i do when I get to bed, I start designing the cover of Boomer Times. I start doing a lot of things. And, uh -huh. and, and actually, sometimes when I get up, I mean, I'm awake, it's good because it's time that I don't usually have where everything's cleared out of my brain and I can really concentrate on something. And I wake up and I pretty much remember what uh, what I put on that cover. Oh, yeah. It's, Morning time is wonderful for creativity because the, the brain is rested. It's ready to just go. It doesn't have any stress from the day that has come on. So morning's an excellent time to be creative. And, and you talk about the brain a lot. You know, when we first started the show, you talk about the brain and how it affects your body. And, mm. and if you're, you know, if you're tuned and everything's working right. Oh, yeah. Then you get a lot more accomplished, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the brain, just like anything else in the body, is an organ. The heart pumps blood. The digestive system digests your food for you, your muscles help you move, and your brain is there to solve problems. So if you're not solving a problem, your brain just kind of sits there. That's why you constantly get these problem thoughts that pop up in your head, because your brain's trying to work. It says, okay, we need a new problem to solve so we can work. And sometimes those problems don't need to be solved. <laughs> Lloyd Hasner is watching. Lloyd is a, uh, he's been a major developer uh, in Palm Beach County. And I'm, Hello, um, Lloyd. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's funny that people, Facebook is very interesting. I've had a few positions on and people start to ask questions actually on Facebook. You see, you can start doing that now. Okay. You know, that, yeah, we don't have that happen yet. But after you're here a while, maybe that'll start happening. We'll start to see. People are interesting. A lot of them 
don't want to talk or do anything. They just want to listen because that's what I do. You know, oh, yeah. That's, to a lot again, of it's like watching a, a show. It exactly. is. Exactly. It is. Yeah. Okay. So we have probably a, another minute or two left. But so this was your first radio show with us. And we're very excited that you're here. And everybody can tune in on Saturdays at 630. And we will be having more from Dr. Alvien. Uh, well, what I'd like to try to do in the next ones is maybe focus on particular case studies that okay. you had, that what someone came in with, what it took, how many, you know, how long it took, and and maybe even the obese part. Of it. Maybe there'll be some people who you've be able, been able to help. Okay. Have lost weight and are now walking or running in marathons. Uh, by the way, Dr. Alvian's wife's named Donna. And hopefully you're watching, Donna. If not, we're going to get you to watch next week. <laughs> but um, when you leave here, you can go and get her some coffee because she's, you know, so so she knows that you were here at the radio station. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Dr. Alvian, we're, uh, we're, do you have a dog? No. Uh, children. Is that on your? Oh, just, you have, oh. just children. We're, we're, we're uh, we like dogs, but we're between my wife and I and the children, we're not home enough that I'd feel comfortable yeah, with I, a I dog understand. because I, I so if, tell if it's there, how many I feel I would have, have. We have three. You have three children. No wonder your wife's sleeping. Yeah, all daughters. Oh, my heavens. How <laughs> old are they? 15, 14, and 8. Now, for those of you on Facebook, to look at Dr. Alvian, that would be hard to believe. That is fantastic. Well, you have really held yourself well. That's all the exercise and stuff you do, is I isn't think it? so. Yeah, I got a birthday coming up in a, Amazing. the 28th. Amazing. Isn't that wonderful that you're, you have your, your daughters now? Are they all sleeping too? Probably. I would hope so. Well, no, let's get them to come up and watch you. Oh, that's marvelous. Well, you know, Dr. Alvian, we certainly are glad that you're, um, you're going to do this with us. Again, his phone number is 561-826-3808. And the website is totalitychiropractic.com. <clears throat> and his last name is spelled A-L-V-I-E-N-E. <clears throat> He's located in Boca Raton at 1449 Yamato Road, Suite 2. And uh, we'll be talking more about discovering your pool. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I Thank really you. appreciate Thank this. Thank you for uh, being there. And we're, uh, we're, you know, we're, what we're trying to do now is find a way for people with all the chaos in the world, and there is a lot of chaos, to bring people like you on our radio show so that they can get away from the TV, turn off the TV, right? Just, yes. And, and you know, I'll just tell you one thing before we go. <clears throat> I drive a lot, and it usually happens in Boca Raton. The light turns, and there's honk. I mean, come on, you know, just relax. <laughs> and I, what I do is I, I never, you know, I don't get raged or anything. I just do it. I look at the person if I can see through their window as I'm going, but... Just relax, everybody. You know, get off of that, you know, pressure stuff. Anyway, Dr. Alvian is going to help us in the future. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful that I was able to do this this morning. Yeah, so we'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will. A lot of fun.